Well, JB, five weeks ago, America started this journey together uh, that was The Last Dance, 10 episodes all the way through. You and I obviously talk all the time. And so I told you that up until episode seven, I was totally on board, kind of fell off last week. But I, I got to tell you, I really liked the way they wrapped things up on Sunday. I, I thought it was uh, overall great from start to mm-hmm. finish. Look, I think a lot of people watch this, and you're either watching this in one of two ways. One, you just want to be entertained and enjoy it and celebrate what the Bulls were and remember all those great runs that Michael Jordan had and learn some of the stories behind it. Or you're going to be a little more cynical and you're going to look at things that weren't in there. You know, there were definitely things that they could have exhausted further. You could argue, you know, it's easy to take shots at Jerry Krause early on when he's not around to defend himself. You can get on Michael for not having his family more involved. But at the end of the day, I mean, was it not? 10 great episodes that we've just spent time watching. Sure, there was some highs and lows in this series, but overall, for the last five weeks, give me this. We've had nothing else to watch on TV. Yeah, so rather than go through and talk about what worked and what didn't in the documentary, let's talk about that. Like, there has been nothing to watch on TV for the last five weeks. You know, I I was talking about this on Sunday during the day with a buddy, and that is, you know, sports being back is great uh, unless you know like me you find nascar incredibly boring and can't connect to ufc at all and then it still feels like sports isn't back so this is what there is Uh, to your point would this have gotten more scrutiny if the world didn't turn upside down and it aired in june the way it was supposed to maybe yeah maybe maybe. but but here's the thing the people who are going to criticize this are those who have questions about michael jordan and want him to open up like an open book he's Mm -hmm. never done that I assume once the numbers come out, we will find out that episodes one through 10 of The Last Dance are the top 10 highest documentary, highest rated documentaries ESPN has ever aired. They're going to follow this up with a 30 for 30, uh, a two-parter on um, Lance Armstrong. Mm-hmm. Do you care? That one I'm interested in, but not nothing like The Last Dance. The Maguire Sosa one will probably get me back because mm. I love that race, but look, this is different. This is Michael Jordan. This is the Chicago Bulls. That was the team that, as a Knicks fan, crushed me for over a decade and a half. I will tell you. those Ewing teams, like, I love those teams, just like the Miami Heat fans love their team and the Pacers and the Pistons. And every single one of us had to go through the same agony. There's damn Jordan doing his thing again. Well, you know, that's one of the things that really – it gets really hammered home in the last episode when it starts off with the Reggie and Michael back and forth with the Indiana Pacers. Reggie was drafted in 87, 87, 88 is his first season. He's 11 years, excuse me. He's 10 years into his career before (laughs) he's finally starting to think about maybe breaking through over those Michael Jordan teams. Well, that's Uh, what it was. It was Jordan. I mean, listen, the Knicks had a window when Jordan left. They went to the finals. They were up on the Rockets. Then the OJ game and John Starks, two (laughs) for 17. And the next thing you know, they lose, right? And then that window closed because Jordan came back. And once he did, it was all over. The only way, and I thought, you know, the end scene tonight, um, when, when you watch the final episode and the final scene, And Jordan's looking at the iPad watching Reinsdorf talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm with him. You just won three titles in a row. You have the greatest player in NBA history. You have a head coach who's won six championships. Scottie Pippen's only complaint is he wants to be paid what he's worth. All of these things for Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause to not figure out a way to keep that group together – it's bad. It's And look, they haven't won anything since. Yeah. You know, you talked about um, that maybe people like that LeBron is a little bit more open. And, and we're talking about the final episode of The Last Dance in the same weekend. He does something like that celebration for, for graduates, 2020, right? I don't know if that one of the final lines, one of the final on-camera interviews they show with Andrea Kramer when she talks about what Michael Jordan accomplished before the age of social media – And that goes into David Stern talking about, uh, you know, when when, uh, we started with the uh, Dream Team, the NBA was in 80 countries and now it's in 215. You know, he wasn't outspoken, but he was a cultural icon. I mean, there's a whole generation of kids that know Space Jam. There's a whole generation of us that whistle, I want to be like Mike all all the time. And I don't know 
that a LeBron James documentary, even if you waited 20 years from now, would hit the way this hit because all of this stuff was brand new when Jordan was doing it. Go back to well, like that second episode. With to the me, thing, like man. everyone who likes to go down that road, the only people who you really hear saying LeBron's better than MJ are typically under 25 years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I get it. You didn't grow up and see Jordan, but there's a reason why Kobe Bryant and LeBron James both saw Jordan as the best. Yeah. Okay. Jordan. Uh, and, and I think to your point, Jordan was, I mean, there was nobody in sports. Wayne Gretzky was on top of the world. So was Mario Lemieux. Reggie Jackson had been a big star in the eighties. Strawberry, Conseco, all those guys, Roger Clemens. Montana. Nobody touched Michael Jordan. Yep. Okay. And then on top of what you're talking about, the thing with LeBron that makes it tougher, yes, he's more outspoken. Yes, he get, which will probably make for an interesting documentary at mm -hmm. some point, just for how he was a little different in that regard than Michael was, than Kobe was, right? But the part that he doesn't have is he, first of all, he wasn't the guy who hit the game winning shot like Jordan did time after time after time. Now yeah. LeBron had his moments. Don't get me wrong. He's obviously a hall of fame player. One of probably the top five, 10 players of all time, but he wasn't the guy that took over like Jordan did in crunch time. Kobe was closer to Jordan, in my opinion, in that regard. I, the I second think that part the, the big difference is that he lost in the finals a bunch right. of times. I mean, right. we can't dismiss that. All right. So uh, given how long this took to make, even once ESPN got the green light, just how long it took to compile these interviews, no matter how long this pandemic gets, uh, we're not getting another 10 part documentary <laughs> about anything. Right. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, listen, what, I, what subject matter? Okay. Like Kobe, Kobe would be a fascinating one, which not I for 10 episodes. Could, but they're not going to do 10. Okay, I'll give you one. There is one story that I think, I don't know if it could sustain 10, but there is one other athlete that I would want to do a deep dive on. Give me 10 episodes of Mike Tyson. Yeah, you're right. He's probably the one guy that there, there's some meat on the bone, if you will. <laughs> I mean, like down the road, maybe Brady Belichick. But right now, like I can't think of anything else other than Tyson well, that is that kind of interesting. the thing Tyson is there's so much – Right, entertainment uh, value there, and so many interesting figures. Now, the only thing that sucks is if you don't have Don King around to right. talk, that sucks because I think that's a key part of all of it. But there's enough interviews that they could dig stuff from. Brady didn't say a lot. Belichick didn't <laughs> say a lot. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of you know. I mean, when we come up with controversies with them, it was like, oh, you know, Wes Welker talked about uh, Rex Ryan's foot <laughs> fetish and like these <laughs> these things that you go, yeah, it's good for a storyline this week, but this is not Mike Tyson got arrested. Right. You know, this is not Mike Tyson uh, coming back and then all of a sudden biting Evander Holyfield's ear. Like none of that stuff. That, right. It's I just mean, different. We go from raising pigeons to baddest man on the planet to the video game to, you know, arrested for sexual yeah. assault to the comeback to – somehow America's sweetheart all of a sudden. I I'm mean, trying to think, like, you know, when you go back in that time, like, Ken Griffey Jr. was great. You wouldn't do a – Yeah. You probably wouldn't even do five parts, you know. Right. Derek Jeter was great. And I – listen, I'm a diehard Yankee fan and Derek Jeter fan. I'm not sure there's ten parts there for Derek Jeter. I, I Ronda mean, Rousey, as, UFC. That'd right? be interesting. Interesting, but it's probably a like Lance Armstrong. It's probably a two or three parter. It's I, not a ten parter. I'll tell you. So my all time favorite NBA player, and and this is weird given that I'm a Celtics fan, but my all time favorite NBA player is Allen Iverson. I think you could get more on him than just what they did with that thirty for thirty a few years ago. But you're not getting. No, you're not even. I'll getting tell you four one that would be phenomenal, and it's not really along the same sporting lines. Yeah, but. The the thirty for thirty on Vince McMahon, you could yeah. do ten parts. The problem is he'll never do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that'll be uh, that'll it be, be a WWE, WWE films yeah. uh, release, and it's going to be or he's going to sell the rights to a movie company. Right. And he's going to make a ton more money than just putting it on free TV.